Hello there. So the idea of today's video is to learn how to call functions from other functions inside a WebAssembly text format and how to import functions from JavaScript. All right, so in here, I just copied the code that we had from last time. So um, just our basic addition function, which adds two parameters and returns the addition. We then export it. Um, and then here in our JS file, we're just fetching, fetching it and instantiating a module uh, performing the addition and then printing the result. Then in our HTML file, we'll just call it. And that's about it. So, as I mentioned, these are our two goals today. So let's start off with calling functions instead of what. Um, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function. Um, this function will be nameless. We'll receive a parameter i32 and it will return a result i32. Okay, now, um, sort of overcomplicating the problem, but what I want to do is instead of getting this local get zero, I want to pass this value onto this function and get its result and then perform the addition with its result. So we're just sort of piping it to another function, which we don't really need to do, but just for purposes of demonstration, I'll do that. So um, here we're going to still get our local zero and uh, in here we're just we're just going to do local dot get zero which will just add the parameter that we're getting to the stack and then we can use it later on but yeah local dot get zero and here that's the important piece of syntax is call and i'm going to refer to to it as zero because that's where it is in the um s expression tree all right so what's happening here we're calling our we're getting our parameter zero we're calling a function and we're passing it this parameter and this is then just adding it to the stack. So in here we have an i32, in here we have another i32 and we can just add the two. Nice. Um, now just to simplify things a little bit, and I don't want to really name this function, I just want to directly export it. So something I can do, uh, shorthand, I can say export add. This way we don't really need this um, we don't need what we had at the end there. All right, so our code is looking nice. Um, let's try running it. All right, so we got one, two, four, five. Um, and if you remember from last time, we're passing on to the addition one, two, four, three, and two. Um, so just to recap, uh, we're passing these two values onto our add function. Uh, it's receiving one, two, four, three, and two. Uh, we're getting the value at zero. We're passing it onto this function, which does pretty much nothing. It just does what we had before. It puts it back onto the stack. Um, now this function is going to return what we had. So one, two, four, three. And in here we're going to get our two, it performs the addition, and that's what we're returning and then printing with result. Great, so now let's talk about the second part of the video, which is importing functions. Okay, so our motivation for importing a function um, right now is because I don't want to do console.log after we get the result. I just want to call the result and I just wanted to well, console, log, whatever we get after the addition. So, yeah, I just want to call this one statement. Uh, what that means is that we want to pass console log onto WebAssembly. Okay. And now this part is a bit verbose, so I'll do the code and I'll explain it um, afterwards. Okay, so what is happening? Um, in here, um, we're creating this import object. Um, note that it's sort of two leveled. So first we create this other object imports and inside of it, we create um, this console log uh, property with a function value. Okay, so this. 
And now this isn't the best looking thing, but it sort of is what it is. So we just have to um, deal with it. And we do this because WebAssembly deals with two level namespaces. So in here, you'll see that we call our imports and then our console.log. So it's pretty much just, it's accessing this object. So it's going to imports and then that. And then in here, we're tying into this uh, log function. Pretty similar to how you had the export before, in which we said add, and then we tied it to a, well, a function. Okay. All right, now, um, in here, we want to actually pass in this import object. So we have something to instantiate, and we're passing in still our bytes and import object. And here in watch, um, important thing to notice is that import, it has to be before all our function declarations. So you can't really put it at the end. It has to be right there. And now instead of doing, of exporting a result, I don't want to export it. I just want to say, I just want to call log. So log is going to access the last value in the stack, which is um, the output of this addition. And if everything works as expected, it will print it to the console. So now let's run our code again. Oops, I noticed a mistake. Uh, in here, I wasn't accessing the function by its name. I was accessing by its index. Um, now that we added the import, this function is no longer index zero, it's actually index one. So that's a reason why we will probably want to name our functions, but I'm lazy, so I'll just change that to one again. So now let's actually learn our code. And there we go. We still get one, two, four, five and is being printed to the console without ever calling console.log from JavaScript. Um, not too exciting of an outcome, but um, it's pretty cool for what it allows us to do in the future. So stay tuned.